Eight years ago, Kaggle started a competition to see who could come up with the best machine learning algorithm that could identify dark matter halos in images of the night sky. Today, I want to talk about the winning solution, which came from Tim Solomons. So first, what is a dark matter halo? Well, dark matter is a matter that exists or we hypothesize exists in the universe that it does not interact with light, but has some mass. And we know that from our calculations that if it exists, it's at, it outnumbers normal visible matter seven to one. So there's a huge amount of this dark matter in the universe. And according to Einstein's general relativity, anything with mass will distort space time around it. So that means if you have some dark object in the sky, these dark matter uh, masses, or we expect galaxies made of dark matter exist, if you have these in the night sky, they will bend and distort space time around them, meaning that light from sources behind those galaxies or masses will distort around that gravitational field, and we will see it from from our position as some halo object, as you can see in this image on the right, will be some halo. Um, so this is an actual image taken by NASA, and at the center you can see some of these, these are all galaxies in this image, and at the center you can see some of these galaxies distorted in sort of a circular pattern. Well, this is what this is exactly what we see. Um, when there's some massive object in front of these galaxies, they, the light bends around that object and is distorted. So the competition was, like I said, to predict the centers of dark matter halos in some test data set of 120 skies. And the evaluation of this, of these code submissions, um, was the predicted positions of these dark matter halos were checked for accuracy, meaning how close they were to the actual um, position of the halo that Kegel uh, calculates and positional bias, meaning directional bias. And these two things were um, used to calculate some metric, some value, and the closest to zero, whoever submission is the closest to zero wins. And the prize money for first place is $12,000. So here's an example of one of these skies from the training data, um, some set of data that's used to train our machine learning algorithm. And as you can see in the lower section of this image, there is one of these halos, these galaxies, these are all, all these spots are galaxies, they're distorted around some central object. So we're going to use data like this to train our model and then test it on 120 of these sky images. So Tim Salomon's solution can be broken into four pieces. The first step is to construct some prior distribution for the halo position. Or in other words, we formulate our expectations about the halo positions before looking at the test data. We formulate this expectations um, on some training data or just looking at the actual data. Second step is to construct a probabilistic model for the data of the observed ellipticities of the galaxies and given the positions of the dark matter halo. The third method is to use Bayes' rule to get the posterior distribution of the halo positions, the predicted halo positions, and use the data to guess where those dark matter halos might be. And the last uh, step is to minimize the expected loss with respect to the posterior distribution over the predictions for the halo positions. And tune our predictions, we want to tune our predictions to be as good as possible for the given error metric. So there's a couple notes that we have to make that Tim made on the data, the given data. The first note is that galaxy positions are roughly uniformly distributed, um, meaning they can be described in the x and y direction as some uniform distribution. Second note to make is that most skies have between one and three halos. And typically one of these halos is very large and two or the rest of the halos are very small. So for the large halos, we will have a mass, the mass distributed as, like a, as a log uniform random variable between 40 and 180. And the small halos can be assumed to have some mass of about log 20. Now technically the small halos have a distributed mass, but this given or assumed mass 
is close enough to those values that we can it simplifies the model and it's a fair assumption to make. So the prior, the ellipticity relationship that we need, requires an assumption, which is that the ellipticity of the galaxy is dependent on three things. The first is the position of the halos, the second is the distance between the galaxy and the halo, and the third is the mass of the halos. So we can create this ellipticity relationship that we'll use to predict the halo positions. So we have this norm, normal distribution where D is your tangential direction or the direction in which the halo J bends to the light of the galaxy I. Uh, your M is your mass of halo J. You have this function F of R uh, where R is the Euclidean distance between halo J and galaxy I. And this is called a decreasing function. And then you have a variance, which we're going to assume to be 0 0.05. Um, so this discre decreasing function uh, for large halos will just be 1 over the minimum of the Euclidean distance and 240. And for small halos, we'll have 1 over the minimum of this Euclidean distance and 70. So what does this all look like in Python? Uh, I won't spend too much time reading through all the code. Um, but you can pause the video wherever you'd like to look at exactly what's going on in the code. And I'll just give a rough um, idea of how it's all being done in code. And specifically for this, we want to see how we can use the package TensorFlow to do this. So in the first step, like I said, we construct some prior. And we have a function where we construct this multi-posterior log probability for all of the uh, halos in the sky. In the second step, we're going to construct some model for the data. Um, and in this case, uh, the kernel, we're using this uh, TensorFlow probability, this transform transition kernel. And the third step, we're going to use Bayes' theorem to get this posterior distribution for all the halo positions. And finally, in the fourth step, we want to minimize our loss function to get the most accurate position prediction that we can. So what does this all come to? Well, here's one example of a test uh, test sky that we ran this uh, Python code on, that Tim ran his code on. And these colored blobs are the actual posterior predictive distribution. So this is where, this is the distribution in which we predict the halos are going to be. And this black dot is the actual location that Kegel gives and uses as this metric. So as you can see in all these cases, we're very close which is why that Tim uh, won this competition and got his $12,000. So thank you for watching my video. Here are a couple of resources that might be useful for the future. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, thanks again.